second. Fourth stage. stage. Pushed. Engine arm is assay. Okay, I'm going to get the pro. 99. Proceeded. Three, two, one. Ignition. Right that way, Houston. That's your good. Excellent. Nearly 50 years ago, NASA's Apollo 17 mission left the moon. This marking the last time that humans had been on the surface of our cosmic neighbor. Today, NASA's newest rocket sits on the launch pad ready to take flight and begin the next era of space exploration. This era being named the Artemis Generation, which all begins with Artemis 1. So let's talk about that. The Artemis program is named after the Greek goddess of the hunt or wilderness, and is actually the twin sister to the Greek god Apollo, with the Apollo program dating back to the 60s and 70s with NASA's first human missions to the moon. Therefore, the Artemis program is essentially NASA's directive to return astronauts back to the moon. Now, they're going to be able to do this by leveraging much of the technology and knowledge that they've gained from the last few decades. With programs such as the International Space Station, the Space Shuttle, as well as cooperation with private companies, by combining all of these factors will lead to the up and coming Artemis missions. But all of this starts out with the first mission, Artemis 1. Before we get into any specific details of the mission, let's focus on three major questions you may have. Starting with, what is Artemis 1? Artemis 1 is a test flight of all major components for a human-rated mission back to the moon. As I introduce this video, Apollo 17 was the last human-rated mission to the moon. Which leads us to the second question. Are there astronauts on board Artemis 1? And the answer is no. This is an uncrewed mission, meaning that there are no astronauts on board. However, the capsule is intending to eventually have astronauts with the up-and-coming Artemis missions. Therefore, Artemis 1 is more so of a test flight to make sure that everything is operating as expected. Therefore, when we get to Artemis 2, 3, and so on, we can expect there to be crew on board. Which then leads us to another major question. Is Artemis 1 actually going to the moon? And the answer is yes, but it's not landing on the surface. Artemis 1 is essentially going to the moon, orbiting around the moon, and coming back to Earth, taking a little bit longer than a month to do this entire process. To get a little more in detail, Artemis 1 is what is called an integrated test, meaning that many of these different components have been tested individually, whether it be on the ground or in different test flights in the past decade or so. However, now the major idea is combining all of these aspects in order to actually have a functioning mission. So if we've been able to test one part on the ground and another part in space, now we want to combine all of these things to make sure everything functions properly with one another. But there are essentially two major components that we're testing, the rocket and the crew capsule. The rocket is called the Space Launch System and has actually never launched before. There have been various tests here on the ground, and even some of the rocket engines have historically been used for the space shuttle. However, this entire rocket hasn't actually launched from Earth yet. Therefore, Artemis 1 will be the first launch of the Space Launch System, or SLS. So if you hear the term SLS, it's referring to the rocket for Artemis 1. And the crew capsule is called Orion, or also called the payload, because the payload is what the rocket is sending up into space. Now, the Orion capsule has been in development for nearly two decades now, and has previously flown to space on top of a different rocket. But this is the first time that the Orion capsule and the space launch system has been integrated together and will be launched into space. Now, the Orion capsule is where astronauts will be housed when they make their trip to the moon for future Artemis missions. Ultimately, the Space Launch System, or SLS, is responsible for launching Orion into space, whereas Orion is responsible for navigating out to the moon and back to Earth and then re-entering the atmosphere safely. 
So therefore, we can see how these two different components are going to be integrated and tested together for Artemis 1. And if you want more information about the details of the design of the Space Launch System and the history of Orion and SLS, I have another video that I've created before that you could check out that goes into much more detail about these two projects. Although Artemis 1 is a test flight, NASA is never going to pass up the opportunity to conduct some science. Therefore, they've included a few experiments on board, one of which is a mannequin called Moonikin Campos. Now, Moonikin because it's a mannequin going to the moon. But ultimately, it's named after Arturo Campos, which was an electrical engineer during the Apollo program. He actually helped save the Apollo 13 crew by writing up some of the procedures to help turn some of the systems back on after their return coming back from the moon after their failure on their way out to the moon. Therefore, this was actually selected by the public to be the name for this mannequin. And the science that will be conducted is to measure how exactly this mannequin, or moonikin, reacts to different phases of the mission, such as launch and re-entry, what type of g-forces or acceleration it will be exposed to, as well as the vibrations, to help those that are getting ready for the mission to understand what they might be exposed to on their way out to the moon. There are actually two additional mannequin torsos designed to replicate that of the female anatomy to help us understand the exposure of radiation on our way out to the moon and back to Earth. One of these mannequin torsos is actually wearing a radiation protected vest to see how much it can actually help in this voyage back to the moon. Now additionally, there's another experiment on board, another biological experiment but this is sending some components such as different seeds, yeast, fungi, and algae to understand how the radiation exposure may change some of the genomes of these different biological samples. So again, this is just trying to understand how going out to the moon may have an impact from a radiation perspective on astronauts and what we might take along with those astronauts. But alongside the scientific experiments that are within the Orion capsule, which are all the ones I just mentioned, there are also additional cube satellites or CubeSats. Now a CubeSat is essentially a satellite that is really small and is about the size of a shoebox if you want to envision it like that. And these 10 different satellites are actually designed by different groups all across the United States and two groups from Japan. And these are going to be going to various locations, whether it be the moon to understand radiation, to look for ice, and one is even actually trying to land on the moon, while another one is trying to make its way to an asteroid. So these are all going to be deployed as Orion is making its way out to the moon to allow these CubeSats to go to various destinations. Now as I am recording this video right now, Artemis 1, or the Space Launch System, is on the launch pad ready to go getting ready to launch on August 29th at 8.30 Eastern Time in the morning. Now, the launch period can range from around 8.30 to 10.30 on August 29th, but if it gets delayed due to weather or other reasons, then it could be pushed back later into September, and then even further possibly into October and November if there's a lot of delays. But if you have are watching this before that, I highly suggest watching the live stream of the launch and following along with the mission. If you're watching this after Artemis 1 has already launched, hopefully everything has gone very well and you can follow along with the mission as it makes its over a month long journey out to the moon and back to Earth. Again, this is a test flight of all of these different components. Therefore, by understanding how these different technologies are integrated together, we can learn more and make better developments for the future to help send astronauts back to the surface of the moon. Now, if there's anything more about the Artemis program or Artemis 1 that you want to learn about, let me know in the comments below what your questions may be. If there's another video topic that you want me to talk about with Artemis, I'd be happy to take a look into what that would entail. But again, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.